to Data for Future episode 24. Today, we are very happy because we are turning around, going back to our circular economy topics. And when we talk about the circular economy, sustainability, plastic is always something we brought up. Uh, I believe each individual from different level, from raising awareness to start putting action, we all try to put different level of effort to eliminate it and be more cautious about our usage, about plastic and our impact on the environment. But today we are actually, we have this pleasure to have Olio Sagara here, who not only is doing well himself, but also putting his effort, becoming a pioneer in the field to help fight this plastic abuse and to help us to move one step further to a more environmental friendly future. Welcome to the show, Olio. Hello. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yes, I'm Oriol, uh, founder of uh, Boomerang. In, yeah, I'm going to explain whatever is needed about circular economy, uh, reusable packaging, and how to be an entrepreneur in sustainability, what it means, mm -hmm. and how I see this related to technology. I think it's, it's very, very interesting, the show, and thank you for inviting me. So before we dive into Boomerang, I know you have a very interesting journey that led you from an industrial engineer background mm -hmm. to starting your focus into circular economy. Give us some brief intro about your story and how your journey has been. Okay. Yeah, I think this is something uh, I get asked a lot, you know, how I got introduced or how I got started into circular economy or sustainability. As you said, I was an engineer. I started industrial engineer or mechanical engineering, focusing on thermal energy, so like thermal plants and things like this. And at some point during my degree, I, I always wanted to go towards renewable energy. Or that was the thing that motivated me the most. And while I was in university, I started surfing and then like becoming more related to, to nature. And when I was abroad on my Erasmus year, then I, I found this organization called the Ocean Cleanup, uh, which is a foundation in the Netherlands, started by a very, very young entrepreneur, Boyan Slat, and he basically made me realize how fucked up the, the oceans were in terms of plastic. It's something I never thought about. You know, I was recycling like this. And suddenly I was aware of that. And as I was a surfer, I, I really, so I really liked surfing. I said, well, it would be cool to, to go there and, and work because they were doing, they were using, creating technology to remove plastic from the ocean. And I said, maybe I can get a job there. So I was lucky enough to land a, an internship in the ocean cleanup in the very, very early days. Uh, it was basically three people there, Boyan, Femke wow. and I. <laughs> Because it, it, I was there in a like a transition period between two two teams, so I was the intern, like helping in everything that can be. And while I was there, that was back in 2014, circular economy was starting to become a topic. The, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation was running, I think, since 2010. I think this is the tenth year, so it was a very new topic. And when I discovered it. I, some, something suddenly made click, you no? Know? Like because I, I never felt myself an activist, you know. Because I think sometimes activism makes like a barrier to progress, or like it, it's it, they see it as an as an antagonism, mm -hmm. and I don't think this is the case. But then I saw circular economy, and it was like a, a solution for this problem that we have, which is basically we are consuming and throwing away a lot of a lot of stuff so all this became a realization for me thanks to to the ocean cleanup and to studying industrial engineering because my my work at the ocean cleanup was as an engineer actually okay. and after the the ocean cleanup i went on a travel journey in southeast asia and new zealand and then it became even more clear that i have to do had to do something about the problem of plastic pollution, mm -hmm. because in Indonesia, where I spend most of my time surfing and traveling, it was 
so obvious, like uh, people were burning trash all over the place, but not because they were, they wanted to do that, you know. I remember a very clear moment with a fisherman. I spent the whole night with them and with his family and everything, and they were throwing away all the time the plastic, you know, and as a, as a, as a foreigner, you don't want to, to be rude or, you know, like it, it's, it's how they do it. But now, because I, I, I became more intimate with him, and I actually asked him, like, why do you throw away all the plastic? You don't see it as rubbish, like, why do you do that? And he basically said, why not? It's, it's a, it's, it comes from plants. Like, he really thought oh. it came from plants, uh, from the rubber, from rubber. Okay. And uh, when I told him, no, no, like, this material is actually made of the same thing you put in your motorbike, like, for him was, like, what do you say? Like, that's not possible. Like, he... So they, they, it, it's, it was a lack of education and awareness and information f that they were lacking. Not, not that they don't care, like they really care about the environment. It's just that they don't think that what they are throwing away will stay there for years and years. And what they, what they find in the ocean, mm -hmm. it's what they threw like a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So when I finished traveling, I tried actually to stay in Indonesia doing some work as a, in an NGO mm -hmm. that didn't work out. And then when I came back to Barcelona, I, I was already committed to, to do something about uh, the plastic pollution problem. And I started as a civil economic consultant in packaging. Mm -hmm. And then I always, I always had this entrepreneurial thing inside me. Sure. So I was always doing my side projects. Uh, we created the zero waste, uh, group in Barcelona, the first meeting. Well, I was part of the first meeting. We did some some stuff there, some some things emerged from that, like the Zero Waste Barcelona Network and other stuff that other people continued. And always related to zero waste and plastic pollution and stuff. And yeah, this eventually led me to, to start Boomerang. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> A very fascinating journey for me i love how you start learning about the concept yourself from your internship your job and your environment then with your traveling you realize that there this information education awareness gap and what's even what impressed me most is you start taking action and start doing something about it I, tr I truly admire it because from my perspective, I educate myself and I think I'm aware and I try to do the best myself about reducing plastic. However, when I think about how I can make a bigger impact, the picture for me is not that clear. And as you said, you came back to Barcelona and you start working with circular economy as a consultancy or you start with packaging. I'm very interested to hear about how did you decide the direction? Because how can you just come back and all of a sudden become a consultancy yourself? No, and uh, no. why packaging to start with? Do you think that makes the most impact? Well, no, I, I didn't create my own consultancy. I was, so I, I was looking for jobs, consultancy jobs uh, on a circular, as a circular economic consultant on, on this field. I was not experienced. I didn't, I, I didn't study circular economy or, or sustainability or something related. And that was back in 2017. So the topic in Catalonia, Spain was just starting to like the first circular economy summit was, was held and things like this. But luckily enough, there is a consultancy called uh, Eco Intelligent Growth in San Cugat. And they, uh, they are based on the cradle to cradle met methodology, which is one of the of the methodologies that, that where circular economy was created of. There is the cradle to cradle, the biomimicry, the blue economy. There are all these school of thoughts. That's, that's the name. Schools of thoughts mm -hmm. that bundled together create the concept of circular economy coined by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Mm -hmm. So this consultancy uh, is the, the only one in the South Europe that can certify products with the cradle to cradle methodology and they wanted to do something with packaging and because I was in the ocean cleanup and I, I was very annoying about plastic pollution and packaging and packaging and like this 
the the CEO Ignacy uh, thought I I could I could do something <laughs> valuable. <laughs> so he basically said, okay, like, let's see what you can do, <laughs> and hired me to try to to create the the packaging section of the company. They were mainly working with fashion industry and construction industry. The one of the main polluting industries in the world is the construction industry and fashion. And then he said, let's see if we can do something with packaging. So I did, uh, I, I could find some projects, but companies in Catalonia are not really the forward thinking. And it was mainly like, uh, okay, we ha- we're using plastic here. We want to use something compostable. What can we do? Like it was not really innovation or, or new processes or new business models, which is what I, I'm trying to pursue with, with Boomerang. And I was there for two years and a half. And basically at the end of my journey there, I was basically doing more digitalization, actually, and not related to packaging, but to construction. So one of the biggest projects that Intelligent Growth is, is, is doing is creating material passports, digital material passports of buildings, with the concept of a building is a materials library. So... Right now, at, till five years ago, everyone saw a building as when it's built and someone so it's left alone. No, like it needs to be it needs to be destroyed. Everything inside is just trash, basically. Maybe except the copper or some other metals. The rest goes to landfill. So why don't we? And this is basically because we don't know which materials are there, where they are, and how to how to get them back. So the concept of the, of the material passport is that you create a, basically a database of all the materials that you have in, the, in that building, where they are, how they are, how they were put together, and how you need to deconstruct them and, uns- and ensemble them. And then you can create like a secondary market of, of raw materials that are reused from buildings, which is a very cool concept and in other like in the Netherlands it's more advanced uh, with other and there are many European projects that are trying to pursue this because it's actually a lot of it, it can be quite a big industry actually <laughs> like billions <laughs> if you if you if you find a way to make it happen because uh, con- building a so construction is a very chaotic environment and it involves a lot of people and also there are materials that you really don't know what is in there in them. Well, talking about business opportunities here, we're, uh, uh, construction is definitely a big industry, but I assume the life cycle of this library, this passport is also longer because yeah. its construction can take many, many, hopefully like longer years to be mm-hmm. recycled and break down. Uh, but that's definitely a very interesting concept to be thinking about because recycling, we're talking about plastic, which is very immediately to our hand and we like finish using them within seconds versus a building on the longer term, like, and fast fashion you were mentioning with the packaging. What interests me also is when you mentioned in the traditional way, when people are thinking about we are going to ditch plastic, be more sustainable, they look for compostable materials. However, f- from your what you said, you don't think that's good, a really good solution because that doesn't change the nature and it doesn't change the business model. Mm-hmm. Can you further explain on that? And also, a building, it, it has a longer life cycle, but... The, the, actually, the, what we did is separate the building in different layers. So you have the foundations, for example, which are forever. No? Then you have the structure, which can last maybe 40, 50, even 200 or more years. No? It depends on what you build. But then you have the interiors or the furniture, which have way faster uh, life cycles. So it's like an onion, basically. So you have... S- there are six layers, and there are layers that change every two weeks, like depending on like a, a, the events industry. It's actually, it's construction, but you change every two weeks or every week. And most of the materials in events are thrown away. Like they're not, all the carpet, uh-huh. it's 
tons, tons of PVC, tons of toxic that are going away every every two weeks. And because it's cheaper to throw away than to reuse, this continues. Answering the the plastic uh, versus compostable. On when we talk about packaging, we need to. There are several. So it depends. No, there is. There are areas where compostable is maybe the only solution at the moment, and there are other areas that putting compostable materials is 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 not a good solution. One of them is, for example, um, take away food. No. Or, or take away drinks, like because compostable is not it's not like a magic thing. Like many people think about compostable materials as something you throw in the environment and then just after three weeks, oh, that's that's very nice uh, dirt for for plants to grow. It's not like this actually. So compostable is just a definition of a material that biodegrades in less than twelve months. That's a definition of compostable by the European Union. If you don't fit that, you you are not compostable. So it depends on the on the on the use you're do, you're giving to your to your material. For example, like a cucumber, no, that is a very uh, many many people hammer these uh, cucumbers that are wrapped in plastic. But actually, there is a reason for that. Like uh, a cucumber, if you don't wrap it in plastic, it only lasts like three or four days. Mm -hmm. Then it goes bad. Cucumbers are not, a lot of them maybe are not coming from nearby, so they need to travel. And that's why they put them in, in plastic, because otherwise you would have much more food waste. Yeah. So in this case, these cucumbers might may be a good solution to wrap them in compostable plastic mm -hmm. in order not to use single-use fossil-based yeah. plastic. And broccoli. <laughs> or, or broccoli, yeah. yeah. Uh, all these very fast perishable sure. uh, vegetables there is a reason why they come wrapped in plastic. The ones that don't have like avocados, no, that doesn't make sense. Or bananas, it doesn't make sense. But cucumbers or broccoli or things like this, yeah, that, that makes sense that they come wrapped. <laughs> so better that they come wrapped in, mm -hmm. in compostable. That's a better solution than not just uh, fossil-based okay. plastic. And then let's talk about the delivery part, which is what Boomerang is originally from. Mm -hmm. Well, delivery, we don't really do delivery. We are more focused on the takeaway. Mm -hmm. So we, we understand delivery as uh, you order some you order some food from a restaurant that, and then someone picks it up for you and brings it to, to your place or wherever you are. This is not what have been growing and many unicorns no, in the industry with, uh, <laughs> with this concept of, of delivery. But if we need to create, so Boomerang is a, it's trying to switch society to, a, to, you, to the use of reusable packaging again, right? Our grandparents and, and ancestors were doing this, no? They, you didn't have single-use packaging or containers. You had your bread bag, you had your legumes bag and and your soda bottle that you reuse and you refill in, in the, and the milkman no, came by your door and left the milk and then you, you left it there empty. No, that, that was very common. When the single use packaging came and plastics became very cheap, the industry shifted to, to single use because it was cheaper and it was more convenient. Mm -hmm. What we tried to do is merge these two worlds, the convenience of single use packaging and the sustainability and also the economy part of of reusable packaging and the and the aesthetics and good feeling no like the, ex the user experience of having something that is created to last longer and that is is built with good yeah. with good taste i don't know so to do that what we are doing and we're focusing on the takeaway industry on the food that that is already prepared and then you go to the restaurant and you take it with you and to try to mimic this convenience of just taking something from a restaurant, eating it and throw it away. What we are trying to create is a network of restaurants that is big enough so that if you want to, let's say, take a poke from the Barceloneta and eat it all the way to Poblano, for example, 
you can do it and then when you're finished and with with that boomerang with that reusable packaging you can drop it in any restaurant of of Pueblo Now. and then the different partners of the network are responsible to clean them sanitize them and you are always you always have one boomerang waiting for you in any of our restaurants like you don't need to bring your packaging from home or or from the office like there is always one there to make that uh, that possible we are using technology uh, because we want to avoid the exchange of money normally what or what our grand grandparents did was if i want to take the milk in a re in the reusable bottle i have to leave like one euro extra for the for the bottle and when i bring it back they give it they give back that euro but let's say you want to take a three meal course that's three boomerangs maybe you would have to pay because that's an expensive packaging maybe you would have to leave 15 euros as a deposit so what we did is we digitalized this with an app and every time you get the boomerang you you get that boomerang assigned to you and you have 15 days for free to bring it back to any of our of our partners in the network okay. and this is the way it works no so restaurants are responsible for sanitizing and users are responsible just to bring back the the boomerangs sure. so when we talk about delivery delivery is based on the assumption that someone is lazy enough not to go down their apartment and buy uh, the food next to the door right so that's where it clashes <laughs> because and we didn't try this but there, there are some competitors in singapore and in australia that are offering this the reusable packaging service through delivery service delivery platforms and they make the users bring it back but uh, for the moment we didn't have we didn't get an agreement with mm -hmm. with one of the players in delivery here and we didn't try this but we have interviewed some people that are heavy users of delivery mm -hmm. and basically they say you know like i use delivery because i'm very lazy <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I would bring back the empty container to somewhere else. They say that maybe they would pay, but we didn't try this either. So, and you know, when in, in startups, there, are, there is this rule that you cannot ask customers what would they do, no? Like uh, if you ask someone, would you buy a mansion if you had the money? Yes, of course, no, but it's not a real, yeah, the mom test, yeah. Yeah, the guy. So it's very difficult to know if that's really the, what the real thing, or it's 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 just that they want to make you make you happy. Let's say. Well, then tell us more because the concept here is not you're not really thinking about tapping into the area where food delivery is mainly facing the same audience. You're not facing the same audience from what you said. Then when you're putting them in the restaurant, like when you talk about the milkman model, how the last generation has been operating their day-to-day -day life, there's always some conflicts between circular economy and the convenience we're enjoying nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's always, we want to spend less time, less money, more convenience versus sustainability. The sweet spot that we found, and now it's gone for the moment, was office office areas because there you had like big volumes of people having very little time in the middle of the day but they don't want things there. like what we found is that people on the lunch break they want to get out of the office you know like they, they want to see the sun they want to talk to colleagues like get out of the boss uh, side you know so it was very easy like uh, actually when we were launching january february with our mvp we had two restaurants only, but only with those two restaurants, we had like 400 users and 70, 80 boomerangs per day being used just with two restaurants. So it was, it was really good. And then we had office caterings and the use there was very big. So th that was our sweet spot, but, but now this is gone and now everyone is, is working from home. And these office areas, no, like we're now in the 22 Arroba, no, 22 Arroba and it's empty quite often one of our clients that was selling like plus 100 meals a day now it's like at 30 percent of the of the volumes they were doing pre-pandemic because no one is here so we are still f trying to 
to find how boomerang can can be in this new work from home environment or a reality that we are that we are facing and it's it's not that much of a problem that people need to bring it back and if you make it convenient enough so if you have enough cap capillarity if you have enough points to return it like uh, it's it's not a problem it's not a problem either for restaurants to to sanitize them because they already do it with their own okay. like cutleries and dishes and plated so everything they use for cooking and also this is way way cheaper than using compostable packaging that's our main entry point with uh, with restaurants and partners is that they are going to save thousands of euros per year if they use if they use boomerang so like buying two dishwashers that clean they can clean 30 of these in five minutes it's not a problem like you just put them while you are cleaning the rest if, if you're not cleaning your kitchen then probably you're not going to be a partner of boomerang <laughs> But um, it's not it's not really a problem that that part. And the only thing that uh, it's how we manage to put boomerang into delivery. That's that's something we're trying to to figure out because also what happens with delivery is like the the user belongs to the platform, and we don't work with the platform. We work with the restaurant, and the restaurant is who is serving the user. So there is a little bit of like. These platforms don't want to share the users or the information, so they're very opaque. Yeah, that's uh, that's one issue. <laughs> so I assume you've had conversation with some platforms and uh, didn't get good results. That's what mm -hmm. you said. That okay. Well, I think for my side, I'm very interested to learn more about the business model you're adapting because I think it's clear to me now that restaurants can actually save a lot of money by switching to boomerang rather than the compostable packaging uh, but just in terms of business model with the application are there what's your innovation here mm -hmm. so where the business model is it's called no it's a circular business model it's called packaging as a service so we are not selling packaging to our partners we are giving them a service and this service is providing them with a platform that uh, the digital platform where they can lend the boomerangs that they have in the in the restaurant to the users and then collect them back so that's that's basically our our service here it's having the platform and providing the packaging and having different you know as as we learn more about uh, the needs of our of our partners and the different types of food that can can fit here. We'll keep introducing new packaging formats. At the moment, we just have like two formats of like a bowl, but there, there are more options. No? Like sushi people, for example, they want like a, a flat tray, transparent, so you can eat it well. There are some options there, but of course, until we don't see like traction with this, we, we're not going to pursue it. But so that's what you give them, no? You, you are... You, you solve them the the packaging side, which is always a pain in in the in the restaurant takeaway industry. It's, uh, keep buying packaging, keep buying packaging every month, like huge bills. Uh -huh. uh, having to store them, like you just need to store the amount that you need for one day. You don't need to store like for three months. And most of these people of the restaurants they buy huge amounts of packaging at once because they get, then they get better prices. Okay. But then they have to store it. So I know one one restaurant who has two two lo so two, two two locations, one for the restaurant and the other one for to store the packaging. <laughs> yeah, because it's uh, it's better to buy big big bulks of, of packaging, so they then it's cheaper. That brings another question for me, though. If a restaurant has a great volume, how much boomerang should they keep in their kitchen? Would that be a problem at all? No, no, right. I mean, they just need to have as many as the users they serve per day and maybe a little bit more, of course. But most of the users, when they go to take one boomerang, they bring one back. So it's a, it's a cycle. And also, if you run low on, on stock, we see it on our platform. So 
we get alerts and we're working on, on this site, on this operational site more. And we will bring you more because that's that's a service. Like you don't pay for the packaging. So if you're running low because the package people are not returning the boomerangs to your to your place and they are returning them to other to other places or they are keeping them with them, we will bring you more. That's that's part of the service. You don't need to buy the the packaging, which buying those it's quite expensive. Well that I didn't know about. I thought as a restaurant they need to purchase a certain amount of boomerang. But let's say if we have an audience who is a restaurant owner and is interested in starting, they just contact you and then you would distribute them like a boat for free mm -hmm. and they will subscri subscribe to the platform. How does it work? Yeah. Do a pitch. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, if, if you're a restaurant owner and and you want to try boomerang, normally we start always with a starter pack, which is 30 boomerangs, depending on the size you want, and then you get signed up on the. So we there's a contract that you that you sign. There is a, a deposit that is a security deposit, like when you rent any any kind of of uh, of thing. No? You always always leave a deposit and this is for us to make sure that the restaurant will will scan and will will use the platform the right way so if at some point there is a disagreement or like this we always have this little deposit uh, for some boomerangs in case you you, you damage them or like this and but it's, it's that easy like you just sign the contract give us the deposit, you choose if you want a monthly or a yearly fee, mm -hmm. and then you sign up, you are on the platform, we give you an account on your, on any phone, like mobile phone with a camera and internet connection, mm -hmm. and so a smartphone basically, can can use our platform and, and you're set, and then you start signing up, you're like telling your users about, so your clients about Boomerang and that you're switching to our platform. We encourage them to put a higher price for the usage of single use packaging. And this works perfectly because at the end you're giving a signal to the client that they are paying to contam to, to pollute. Like you are paying 25 cents if you want to use single use. That's a very powerful message. Because then the the perception of the of the citizen of the client is that oh I'm pa I'm paying to create trash, yeah. and this is a very powerful tool. So we are we are encourage them to to do that, and then that's it basically. Yeah, you don't you don't need to do anything else besides market it and and tell it to everyone. <laughs> Oh, I, I like that. That's a really good nudge. It reminds me of how in the supermarket we're paying for a plastic bag and you can see more and more people bring their own bag. Mm -hmm. Imagine there's a boomerang for a grocery shopping bag. I, I would like that. <laughs> and I like the concept when you we are using technology here to make circular economy more hassle-free in, in that sense. And I as I imagine technology this because you are a platform as you are a service so it's a very key component of your business mm -hmm. and in this point are you satisfied with your current state and what features are we developing mm -hmm. what are the next steps and since we are very focused on data are you is data also a big component of this technology and platform yeah so this is one like the, the data Part. At the end, what we're creating is uh, we are creating a we're counting how much waste we are avoiding, no? Like citizens are avoiding. So our metric of revenue, we could say, is directly linked to our metric of impact, and that's that's what I think makes very attractive uh, boomerang. And we would like to to use this in, in the future because at the end, it's like points that you as a citizen are. Are, you're earning them. Every time you use, you choose to use Boomerang, you're avoiding one single-use item to become waste and potentially to kill animals, harm the environment, and create microplastics, etc. And with this, we would love to be, be able to create some impact, like create partnerships with NGOs, like or create, like, um, at the end, it's a, it's, it's, 
it's a counter, it's a ledger, no? Like you, you keep adding, adding impact in, into that. So you know that this restaurant is creating that much impact. This restaurant is creating that much impact. So you can create this kind of leaderboards and you know who who is the the more active, like the waste warrior or like this, we could say, and who who is more activist, more mad, who is doing more good. Uh, on the on the platform side, uh, one thing that uh, it's clear uh, in the last years is that we are flooded by apps. Now there is always a new app, a new thing. So we try to approach this uh, creating a progressive web app. So it's basically an app that works in your in your browser. You don't need to download it. But this technology, it's still very new and. Basically, in Apple devices, it's not <laughs> it's not as convenient. Like it does, you, you need to keep giving permission to camera and this stuff, so it's not very nice. So we are gonna launch the two apps natively in in iOS and Android at the moment. Like uh, we are on eighth of September, and uh, we are working on the like first official version, the version that is now the, the progressive web app that you can use at the moment, you can sign up, you can do, you can use Boomerang without a problem at the moment, but it's, it's a, it's a beta. So the UI and UX uh, is being completely reworked in the, in the new, in the new version. And after we launch this new version, we're going to start adding features that ideas, like a lot of ideas that we have from loyalty cards to donations to NGOs, as I said, and maybe even like ordering from the app. Like we, we have lots of ideas that we need to test, uh -huh. but uh, first we need to launch this, this, <laughs> this first official version. <laughs> Very cool. You have this app platform as a base and your technology and team to develop those features. But meanwhile, I think it also serve as a very strong base for any further collaboration. As you said, with NGO, with different partners, you can even extend the repo bigger and bigger and have the boomerang going around. That's the idea. And uh, I, I'm trying to create uh, boomerang as a very product focused, focused company and that we listen very carefully to what the users want and we, we try to build product, not, not technology. Not technology are just tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, pe but people use products and people love products and people or services, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's our goal. And we want to create what, not what the user want, but basically what, what will create more impact and make them love Boomerang the most. And at the end, Boomerang, we want, we wanted to make it we are, we have a stand no? here, like we are saying reusables are the future and single use, like not plastic, single use as a concept, as a, as a way of lifestyle needs to end. Like it, it, it doesn't matter if it's fast fashion, if it's shipping containers across the world, like a single use mentality and short term, low quality low durability needs to finish because that's what is killing our planet is this is this lifestyle is this mindset so everything that we want to to do with boomerang that we stand for it's it's uh, against that no it's so that's our standpoint will always be reusability like someone su suggested me when the pandemic was happening you know, why don't you start selling compostables to restaurants that's and i was like no way you know like that's that goes against yeah. what this company was created for. And so we want to promote and make reuse the new thing, make reuse cool again. <laughs> and everything will revolve around that. So collaboration with companies or everything like will will go go in this in this direction. No, I definitely think reusing and recycling has become the new trend little by little more and more nowadays. And it's interesting when you mentioned also before how pandemic is impacting Boomerang in terms of the business side. I also want to ask you, like for a bigger picture, how do you think the pandemic hit the circular economy, this full concept? 
if mm-hmm. you have some thoughts on that. And also going back from the big picture, going back to Boomerang, like down the road, what kind of collaboration you're seeking. Maybe you can also talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the plastic industry tried to to push for the laws and the new regulations that were coming against single-use items in general. But the European Commission and all the companies basically said, no way, like, there is, it's not a thing about single-use is more, it's safer, it's not safer, like... Uh, what is safer, like something that has traveled around the world and has arrived to a kitchen and it's being stored there for 30 days with people moving around, or a reusable container like Boomerang that is made of plastic, secure, it's safe, but has just come out from a dishwasher at 70 degrees with uh, cleaning, like with soap and everything, and it's totally clean at that moment, like, and you're being served on that. It's like a plate from a restaurant, you know, like, would you like to be served in a single use plastic plate in a restaurant or in a reusable porcelain plate? In a reusable porcelain plate, like, no one is thinking about, no, now in my restaurant, I'm going to use single use plastic because people are freaking out. No. So like, don't use that, that excuse. And in terms of boomerang, like we, we've been affected because we were focusing heavily, as I said, on office areas because it was a perfect, perfect, perfect uh, use case and for for our proposal. But in terms of reusability or interest, no, we, we haven't been hit. It's true that people now have other things in their mind, so people are worrying more about masks. But one thing people have been you know, complaining a lot is about single-use masks. So people have that in mind, no? Like, we're not gonna put the environment full of single-use masks just because of coronavirus. No, you can use a reusable one and you can use it 60, 70 times and clean it. Like, it's it's fine. It's fine. Very, very nice information. Thanks for sharing, Olio. Uh, the last question will be, if people are interested to reach out to you, what's the best way? To me, personally, I guess LinkedIn or Uriol Segarra or Twitter, Uriol Segarra Paul. And to Boomerang, in every social network, we have the same handle. Yo, so you Boomerang. Boomerang is not written as it should, so it's with a U instead of two O's. Yeah, visit our website. And if you are lucky enough to be close to one of our partners, we have from this week seven active partners, many, many more down on the pipeline to be activated. And we have, yeah, this week we're activating a new one in uh, Guinardo. Lo- all of them are in Barcelona at the moment because we want to be closer to the restaurants and, and keep improving the platform close to our, to our clients. So we promote boomerang personally in every of the restaurants we activate like we go there for two days and we sign up people we we help them with the process both the restaurant so the partner and the user the client and also there is a chat in the website that you can if you if you want to contact me there it's it goes directly to me as we're a small team and yeah that's 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 the way thank you Thank you very much, Julio. It, that wraps up our episode for today. What's your thought? Are you interested in Boomerang or do you learn more about circular economy or you got more inspiration? Leave your comments and thoughts below with us and check Boomerang out. <laughs> Data for Future, we'll see you next episode. <laughs>